Welcome everybody. And look around you and try to identify the leaders that are sitting around you. Who has the nonverbal communication of a leader? Can you see it? So this is exactly what we did with predicting the outcome of the presidential elections in the USA by watching people's faces and how they react on what you say. We were actually analyzing the faces of the voters who were watching movies with Obama and Romney. Actually, they could do it with their smartphone as well. While they were watching Obama and Romney, we recorded their facial expressions, which showed us who they are going to vote for. And this is an example. Here you see Ben looking at Obama and Romney at a video. And you can see on his face who he's going to vote for. What he does with his chin is not good. Then he raises one of his lip corners. It's a sign of contempt superiority. He's not going to vote for Obama. Then you see him laughing with Romney because Romney makes a joke. But he closes his eyes and just after that, he raises again one of his lip corners. Again, a feeling of superiority, contempt. He's not going to vote for Romney as well. We're looking for micro-expressions in that video. And your micro-expressions, tiny facial expressions of half a second or shorter, they give away how you feel. It's your body language code that can predict your success. Just like Ben seeing Obama, he was having one of his lip corners raised, which feels superior to him. And when he was watching Romney, the same. So his body language code was negative. He didn't like either of them. And what was also important is that um, the elections, actually, it was the first time in the history of the elections that it was possible to predict the outcome based on emotions, not on opinions, but on emotions. And this is also what we are searching for, what makes leaders successful. Actually, I was inspired by that question, what makes leaders successful, by my godfather. These are my parents, and this is my godfather. You were a leader. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a little guy with a big <laughs> snowball on the picture. And I was looking up to my godfather because he was a successful business person. He knew always what to say and how to say it. And I wanted to become like him as well. My father, I learned something else from him. I learned fencing. He was an Olympic trainer in fencing. And in fencing, you have to look at people's body language to predict what they will do so you can act accordingly. This is, by the way, me fencing when I was one year and a half old. Another advantage that helped me and pushed me in the direction of body language was that I had a hearing disorder. I couldn't hear well what people were saying, so I had to watch people's body language to make a connection with them. And this was pretty embarrassing for me in, in high school. I was really bad at dating. When a girl asked, how do I look? I said, yes, I like the food too. <laughs> but as you see, it worked out luckily well. <laughs> Actually, my story begin, began when I was a small girl. When I was three years old, I used to ride, actually with my mother, we were using buses all the time to, to to go to different directions. And because I was so small, I could notice only people's shoes. And this is how I started. I started looking at shoes and analyzing human behavior, personality, how they walk in their shoes, whether they have old shoes or new shoes, and how they are walking. And it was very inspiring for me. And uh, a second important information is about my aunt. Actually, I love to play with my aunt because she was very creative. But in the same time, she had schizophrenia. Maybe that's why she was so creative. And uh, I wanted to understand her and this, um, see what is the difference between her and me. And this is why I also studied psychology, because I wanted to heal my aunt. Yes, yeah, so we were looking, both of us, for the answer on the question, what makes leaders successful? And at the same time, part of Kasia's PhD, she, uh, together we researched over 150 years of body language science. We combined it into a simple system to predict and measure success, which we call the body language code. Now, leaders, we discovered, they have something in common. They see more. They can see the body language code. How? Well, they have three skills for that. 
And the first skill successful leaders have is that they can spot the body language code really well. And about uh, spotting body language, actually we did research in uh, sales in different companies and we saw that there was a correlation between sales results and also reading micro-expressions. And uh, salespeople who are actually reading facial expressions, they are also selling more products, for example, selling more BMW cars. Yes, or more telecommunication uh, units, or um, they, they, more telephones. And the good thing about it is, is that you can see it and observe it in every culture. And we just came from, uh, today from Japan, and we also observe in Japan and also in the Philippines that micro-expressions are really universal. You can see here on the video the same micro-expression of contempt, but the Japanese person does the micro-expression in a more subtle way. So you see that the Philippine person is really expressing himself. So he's more like a child here. So we, we can compare Philippine micro-expressions to children. And Japanese are very diplomatic with micro-expressions. Here you also see disgust on the face, but Japanese people have tendency to hide negative emotions with a small smile that you can also see here. And that's the confirmation, actually, of the thesis of Charles Darwin in uh, 1872. Actually, there was a research on blind people from birth who couldn't learn micro-expressions from their father and mother, and they were showing micro-expressions in the same way as people that can see. So this is uh, the imprint that we have in our brain. If you imagine that our brain is a projector and our face is a screen, this is how we project emotions on the face. The second skill that also leaders have in common is that can, they can empower through their body language code. They can be very conscious of what they do with their body. And they seem to know what to do at the right moments, what positive body language code to emit, and what to avoid, what not to do at the moments that they don't want to do it and they observe and use body language as a stethoscope. The stethoscope at doctor's practice will not heal you, but it will measure exactly what's wrong. And what you can see wrong here is a lot of negative facial expressions in one of our coaching clients. Have a look. I was confronted in the healthcare industry with a lot of new trends. What you see doing him is raising his lip high up and wrinkles around his nose, you know this as well, and this is a feeling of disgust. And subconsciously... I was confronted in the healthcare industry with a lot of new trends. Totally subconscious. But when he became conscious of it, he could change it into this. The three major advantages for you to work with me in so this is why it's important for leaders to become conscious of their body language and they can do it. And this is uh, also about the mindset and also the role of emotions. Because uh, emotions are imp more important than our rational brain. If you could imagine for a moment that you are in a nice cafe and you are drinking a coffee and looking through the window you are watching a nice landscape and suddenly you see an angry dog barking at you and, you know, scary dog on the other side of the window. The rational reaction would be, okay, he's on the other side of the window, so everything is fine. But our emotional brain is stronger, so we are going to jump away. And this is also important in business, in relationships, that our emotions are stronger. Thinking actually leads to conclusions, but emotions lead to actions. And that's why our emotional and reptile brain controls our micro-expressions. And that's why those tiny movements are the most reliable signs of emotions. The third skill that leaders have in common is that they can elicit the body language code in others. And they can read it in mm -hmm. such a way that they can adapt what they say, how they speak, to what they see. And this is also how we met, you know, because we are a marriage, so we had a nice business meeting. Mm -hmm. a very effective <laughs> one. Yes. <laughs> and actually, here, long before we met, um, this is my stepfather, my mother, 
and me, and I learned actually from him how to master negotiations. We were traveling around the world because he had an uh, international company, and um, we were, actually I was observing a lot his negotiations. And once my mother want to, wanted to buy a silver pot, we went to an, an Arabic country, we saw two Arabic people, they were very serious, but my stepfather started with a, a big smile, proposing the first price. And this is what he saw. Actually, this micro-expression here is a micro-expression of contempt, with uh, one lip corner going up. And this is the micro-expression of superiority. It means that the person is hiding something, feeling superior. And it also means that for him, the price was very good, but not for us. So what my stepfather did, he, with a little bit smaller smile, he gave him a lower price to see the bottom line. And he saw this micro-expression. This is the micro-expression of disgust. So the price was really too low for this man to sell the silver pot. Actually, it was disguised with a smile slightly, and that's why you couldn't see the disgust so clearly. But if you can read it accurately, you could. But you can see the wrinkles around the nose, and this is the most important sign. If you imagine that you take a very old cheese from the fridge that was there for two months, you will show disgust. So this is what this man was doing here. And my stepfather knew the bottom line and which price was too high, so now, Finally, with a small smile, he could say the correct price. And um, the micro-expression was this one. This is a micro-expression of happiness, so it meant that the price was good for, for them, the price was good for us. And this is how we negotiated the silver pot. And uh, micro-expressions are like road signs, and uh, they direct us that we can adjust our conversations to what we see on the nonverbal level. For example, in this case, we saw three micro-expressions. The first one was the micro-expression of contempt, and it meant that the price is too high. And the second one was disgust, so the price was too low, but the third one was happiness. It was the correct price. And actually, you can use micro-expressions not only in business, in negotiations, you can use it in relationships. For example, I don't need to talk to my husband. I can However, we do talk <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I can just um, give him a multiple choice and say, for example, would you like to eat Japanese food today? Would you like to have a big soup? Or um, would you like to have a pizza tonight? And based on his micro-expressions, I know the answer. <laughs> Actually, Oprah does the same when she's talking to Armstrong. Let's uh, focus on the face of Armstrong and what you can see in his face. Uh, sophisticated. Actually, in this brief moment, you see one of his lip corners raising and it's a feeling of contempt again. So watch out for this facial expression when you're negotiating with clients because this means that the client will be difficult. So to sum up, successful leaders, what they do, they are able to spot facial expressions, the body language code. They can also empower their own consciousness of their body language code and they can elicit the body language code in others to change and adapt their arguments and this helps them actually to become successful leaders. Not only leaders, also in your relationships. <laughs> Thank you.